Hi, uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you the code and the results for uh, imputation of a data set, okay, using the uh, Gaussian mixture model with the k nearest name. So, at the beginning, let me explain the, the concept or the main idea. So, here is a snippet from the reference to uh, describe the main three steps of the algorithm. So at first we use the GMM, which is just uh, the Gaussian mixture model. It is a probability density function to uh, uh, to uh, describe the probability distribution among the data set. Okay, and what we do is that we use this to generate a larger data set from the uh, data set we already have. So to make you understand the GMM. Uh, let me use this uh, picture. Let's say that we have two uh, Gaussian distribution, and what we want is that we want to get a probability function that w uh, describes the mixture of these two Gaussian distribution. Because in the data set, each feature uh, is probably a Gaussian distributed feature because. Uh, most of the data sets are by metrics or whatever it is random samples okay from maybe people or something like that and most of the features uh, are a gaussian distributed feature okay like the height uh, the color of the skin something like that so each feature we know is a gaussian distribution but what we want to have is to have a, a probability function that this uh, uh, Simulates the whole data set with all features and the GMM is the best one to do it So you can see that each green one here is a Gaussian component and we call this uh, Components each Gaussian for each feature is a component and uh, the, the the blue one here is a, a mixture of both Okay, uh, it's a probability distribution again, but now it uh, simulates uh, or, or describes as a whole uh, data set. Now, what we do is that we get this model, the GMM, by fitting it to the uh, data set. So we have a data set and we fit the best uh, GMM model to this data set. And uh, by fitting, we mean we get the best uh, position for the means each component. As you can see, you have here two components and they are one dimensional. So we have a mean. Okay, at each one, and we also we need to have the uh, covariance. Okay, so uh, what we do by fitting, we get the best values for these two means and the covariance of each of them, and from that we can get the GMM model. And uh, this is happened by an iterative algorithm called EM algorithm, and you can have uh, by looking on the web. You can see tons of resources talking about the EM algorithm to fit the GMM model. So it is an iterative algorithm, and uh, it, at the end, it gives us the best uh, fitting for this GMM. After we have this, we can now get uh, a sample, a random sample, okay, from using this distribution uh, with any size. So the idea is that the KNN imputation needs a large data set. So the problem is that the original data set, the one with the missing data, is, is, uh, has a small number of samples. Uh, they are large enough to get the GMM, but they are not quite enough to do the imputation using the KNN, okay, the, the K nearest neighbor. So to get this simulated data set with larger size, what we do is that after we get the GMM model, we reverse the process. We again get a random data set using MATLAB that uh, obeys this uh, GMM model okay and now what we do is that in the next step we compare each row or each sample in the data set with a missing data to all the samples in the simulated data with the large uh, size now what we do is that we get the k nearest neighbor let's say 5 and uh, what we do is that this 5 Samples are averaged, we take the mean, each of the features, and then we estimate the missing data 
by the mean uh, of this uh, k nearest neighbor. So let's say five. So of this five uh, neighbors, we take the mean and we get a whole uh, sample of the mean of them, and we take from this the data which are missing and and put them in place of the of the missing data. We, we say that these are the uh, estimated value. Okay. So that's it. You have the GMM. Then you estimate the uh, the k nearest neighbors from the simulated to each of the uh, rows with the missing data and uh, then you take the average and estimate the values by the average to, to impute the, the, the missing data okay so let me run the code to see what happens and this code works well with both uh, purely numerical uh, data sets purely categorical data sets or a mixture of those by encoding the categories into integers each integer is specific to a certain category so then we can uh, link this category to this certain number and we can deal with it. Uh, once you run the, the, the code, let's run it. At the, at the beginning, it says choose the complete data set. We use this to compare with the, with the, with the uh, imputed data set to get the NRMS, uh, which is a, a normalized root mean square uh, error. Okay, so we get here and let's choose any of them. But now it's to, it says choose the incomplete data, so we have to take it from the same uh, the same name, right? and then we upload this. Okay, here you go. So let me explain what's going on. At the beginning, you have the rows and the column for each of the missing data. You see each of the missing data as row and column, and give you the the amount of this uh, data. And then what you do is that you have here. You have here uh, this uh, Excel file, and it is updated with the rows using the uh, incomplete data set. We only take the rows with the missing data, okay? And we put them in order for you to see the pattern. Here you go. These are the, the rows with the missing data. And uh, then we get back. What we know, what we want to do is to get the GML. Now, the, the one thing I forgot to tell you is that before we start the EM algorithm to fit the GMM model to the data, you need to tell uh, the, the, the algorithm at the beginning what is the number of components. So actually in this case, we don't know what is the number of components, right? You may say that it is the, the whole number of, 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 uh, of features, but this is not always the case. So we don't know what is the number of components. So to overcome this problem, we try each and every possible number of components from one to the total number of features. You can't uh, go higher than this. We, we uh, use them all, okay, and we see when it converges and, and it, it happens to converge at maybe one uh, case or maybe two or three cases and we get the best effect out of them all. Okay, so the best case here, which is the only one converging actually, is that with the one component. Um, and so it says that they have a Gaussian mixture distribution with one component and in 13 dimensions. Uh, so here is the mean. We want to visualize this, but we can't because it is more than uh, 2D uh, data set. So here is the uh, dimension, or here is the position of the mean, okay, for uh, each of them. Okay. You have an overall uh, NRMS score in percentage, which is how much of an error the imputed uh, converted to the complete. Also, you have updated uh, Excel file here, okay, and this one gives you the uh, difference or the error with each each uh, part of the, of the data set. So whenever it is the same, it is zero, and then you have values here when it is uh, the missing data. With the, with the original. Okay, uh, let's uh, try another another example. Okay, and you can uh, use any of the examples. So try this one. Okay, you have to look for IELTS again. Uh, here it is, and then choose one of the of the, of the examples. Okay, here you go again. You have the indices for the missing data. You have uh, now the Excel file updated. So when you open it again, you can see it's updated. Okay, and uh, 
you have the NRMS updated also. Okay. And uh, you have the iterations with each number of components to see which one is the best. The best is four components and four dimensions. So uh, for each component, you can see the mean. Okay. And this helps you to see it. And you can see the overall. Okay. Uh, one final example. Okay. Let's uh, use this one maybe. Okay. Yes, it was this one. Okay, and and here we go. It, it works fine. Uh, let me at the end explain these parameters. So you have here the parameters. You can change them. Of course, you can have uh, change the number of nearest neighbors. So here we take five. You can use this as you like. And here you have the ratio of the, how much the simulated data set is bigger than the original data set. So R is 5 now, which means that the simulated dataset is 5 times larger than the original dataset. And uh, if the dataset is already large, maybe you want to put this as 1, 2, uh, maybe you want it more, whatever. But as you get it more, it takes, it, it gives you an accurate uh, result, but it takes more time. And uh, the EM algorithm is an iterative algorithm. So you can see it here, you have can set the maximum number of iterations and the tolerance for conversion. This also, this all the, the the samples, the parameters you can you can set. Okay, uh, I guess that's it for uh, this code, and uh, thank you for watching.